all right guys we are going to be reacting to the new anti-gravity ai robot from Oni Tree Chucks the World. This is in China, of course. We're gonna react to this and more technology in the future as well. Let's jump in here. Let's see what's going on. Is flipping through kung fu moves, and Poland's clone robotics is showing off a corpse-like bot powered by synthetic muscles. All of this is happening while China quietly runs more than two million AI robots in its factories, assembling trucks in minutes and coordinating in swarms. It's equal parts exciting and terrifying. So let's talk about it. Let's start with what Unitree just pulled off because this one is both hilarious to watch and actually really important. Instead of doing the usual polished lab showcase where a robot takes a few careful steps and everyone claps, Unitree engineers basically decided to kick the living daylights out of their G1 humanoid. And the crazy part is, it survived over and over again. The secret behind it is what they're calling anti-gravity mode now it's not actual anti-gravity obviously but it's a whole control system focused on balance and recovery older humanoids you hit them they fall and then it's like rebooting a clumsy toy with g1 the moment a kick or shove comes in it's already predicting how to land how to brace or how to step out of the way and that's because the robot is loaded with depth cameras and 3d lidar those sensors give it this live map of the world, where it is, what's moving, what force is about to smack it, and then every joint packed with its own motor reacts almost like muscles firing in sync. What? One of the wildest moments in the demo is when someone delivers a proper sidekick. Instead of face planting, the G1 just spreads its legs wide, leans into Yo, it. Yo, that looks kind of weird, ain't gonna lie. It's less like a machine glitching out. Yeah, this looks really weird, man. More like an athlete bracing for contact. Earlier in the clip, it takes a hit, folds its knees instantly to absorb the impact, then springs back up in one clean move, lifting its full 77 pounds with torque to spare. Later, they push it even harder, like running kicks that send it sliding across the floor, or double shoves that force it to adjust mid-air. Each time, it scans with LiDAR, recalculates, and just gets up again. That's the kind of resilience factories want. And because you know what's crazy? Industrial setting, I know this is more like a, this is more like an American robot, but going back to that, the uh, I, what I want is to make sure we can have robots that can assist with seniors. That's what I want. Robots can that can help and assist with seniors. Even a tiny disruption, like a robot needing a full reset, costs money and time. The G1, priced around $16,000, is actually wow. on the more affordable side of humanoids. And Unitree isn't aiming this at YouTubers trying to go viral. They're looking at research labs and work floors where adaptability is everything. If it can take hits and keep going without someone rushing in to fix it, that's serious value. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. Unitree's CEO, Wang Xingxing, revealed at the Global Digital Trade Expo in Hangzhou that the company isn't stopping at the G1. They are already preparing to launch a full-size 1.8 meter humanoid robot in the second half of this year. And it's not just hype. Unitree has been iterating their algorithms at a crazy pace all year, and the Weibo teasers of this tall robot already drew massive attention. This fits right into a bigger trend across China's robotics industry. According to the Ministry wow. of Industry and Information Technology, just in Scary the times. first half of 2025, wow. the industry's operating revenue went up 27.8% year on year. Industrial robot output alone jumped 35.6%, while service robots climbed 25.5. Wang mentioned that companies in this sector are seeing average growth rates between 50 and 100%. That's not normal growth. That's an explosion. But Unitree isn't the only name making headlines. A company called Aheadform has been doing something that honestly creeps people out. Instead of focusing on balance or cartwheels, they built a humanoid head that can express emotions so lifelike it actually startles people. In one demo video, the head glances around with a quizzical look, blinks naturally, and basically gives you the chills because it's so human-like. Their whole philosophy is that better interaction means giving robots expressive faces, moving eyes, synchronized speech, subtle facial cues, so humans feel like the robot actually understands. They call their lineup the ELF series. And yes, they literally give these robots ELF-like designs with big ears. Some of the models even packed... Oh, this is most for incels, I guess. ...of freedom just in the face 
driven by an advanced AI learning system and high DOF bionic actuation. The latest one, called Zuon, is a full-body figure with a static torso but a head that can pull off a massive range of expressions and lifelike gaze behaviors. Mm. Another, Elf V1, supposedly perceives, communicates, learns, and interacts intelligently with its environment. The trick here is a brushless motor designed specifically for facial control. It's ultra quiet, super responsive, lightweight, and energy efficient, perfect for making those tiny muscle-like movements we rely on to judge emotion. The founder, Hu Yu Hong, is ambitious. He predicts that in 10 years, robots will feel almost human when you interact with them. And in 20 years, they'll walk and perform tasks just like us. He's realistic though. He admits making a robot truly identical to a human is insanely hard. Meanwhile, other Chinese companies like Shanghai Qingbao Engine Robot are already selling androids that look disturbingly real, mainly to attract attention in public spaces, retail, hospitals, schools, hotels, even e-commerce live streams. But for most of the industry, the real focus isn't emotions, it's That shit is scary, I'm sorry. That, that shit is scary as hell, man. I'm sorry. Uh, that, that thing is scary. Tesla, Unitree, Fourier, all of them are building humanoids to work. Yep, to work. Speaking of brutal testing, that's the that's the end goal, guys. Honestly... I'm telling you, that's the end goal. Personally, uh, for seniors and for farms industry, you need to have those, right? Farm industry, ASAP. Really shocked a lot of people. A startup called Skilled AI put out a demo where an engineer literally takes a chainsaw to a robot dog's legs. You'd think that would be the end of it, right? Nope. Their AI brain just keeps the thing moving. Even with all four limbs hacked off, the bot somehow hobbles around. It looks disturbing, but it proves a big point. Skilled calls this system an omnibodied robot brain. Basically, Why instead the of programming an AI to control one specific That's robot, crazy. they trained it across a universe of 100,000 different robot bodies. That way, the AI can't just memorize solutions. It has to figure out strategies that work no matter what body it finds itself in broken wheels, missing legs, walking on stilts, the AI adapts. They trained it to the point where even when reality throws a scenario completely different from training, it still copes. Their claim is that this shows early sparks of intelligence in the world of atoms. And if you think about where that leads, robots that can adapt to anybody, any damage, that's the kind of flexibility you'd want in hospitals, homes, or factories. It's like decoupling the mind from the body. Some researchers, like Jeffrey Laddish from Palisade Research, think this points to a future where AI surpasses human strategy at the same time robotics surpasses human physical performance. And then, of course, combine them. The scary part is if we keep treating robots like disposable test subjects, kicks, what? chainsaws, Ooh. dragging them with chains, you start to wonder what happens if they ever actually outsmart us. Now let's jump to Shanghai, where Ooh, I don't know, man. The N1 I just don't crisis. know. Uh, I just know. I'm excited for the future, but I'm not too excited. One. This is a smaller, lighter humanoid designed as an open source platform, and they just put out a demo that looks like a kung fu routine. The N1 pulled off a full cartwheel and even a 360 degree jump spin. Wow. Watching it land cleanly is impressive because those are not easy moves for humanoids. <laughs> the little hat. <laughs> Boulier's history is mainly in rehab robotics, but with the GR series, GR1, GR2, GR3, they moved into full-size humanoids. The GR1, for example, weighs 55 kilograms and has 44 degrees of freedom. The later GR3 leaned more toward companionship. But the N1 is a shift in philosophy. It's 1.3 meters tall, about 38 kilograms, made from lightweight aluminum alloy and engineering plastic. It runs more than two hours on a charge and can sprint at 3.5 meters per second. The real kicker, though, is that it's open source. Fourier provides blueprints, software, control systems, even the bill of materials, universities, labs, hobbyists. They can all tinker with it. You can buy self-assembly kits or ready-made versions as part of what Fourier calls their Nexus Open Source Ecological Matrix. And while the cartwheel is obviously meant to grab attention, it's also a sign that this robot can handle dynamic forces, balance recovery, and high-stress moves without breaking. 
In terms of market positioning, Fourier is putting itself right next to Unitree's H1, G1, and the new $6,000 R1, as well as Boston Dynamics Atlas that pioneered backflips and parkour. Now over in Poland, Clone Robotics is back in the spotlight with its humanoid prototype, Protoclone. Unlike the sleek designs of... Oh, that's, that's creepy. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's creepy. Imagine that this thing just start moving in the middle of the night, two in the morning. Ooh. This machine has drawn attention for its unsettling corpse-like look, yeah. shown in a recent video where it twitches while suspended by cables. Founded in 2021 by CEO Danush Radhakrishnan, the company took a biomimetic path, first developing a robotic hand with artificial ligaments and myofiber units that mimic muscles and tendons. Within a year, this work expanded into a full humanoid powered by fluidic muscles, in a compact hydraulic oh, man. equipped with sensors for torque, position, and force, and running on NVIDIA Jetson chips, Protoclone is being followed by a next model called Neoclone. So basically, this is AI is going to do the thing. It's going to probably take three, four years more to make sure you can just start moving like, like us, right? Like normal. Skin for more delicate tasks. And zooming out from individual robots, China has now pulled far ahead in global robot deployment. Factories there run with over 2 million industrial robots, more than the rest of the world combined. A decade ago, density was 49 robots per 10,000 workers. Today, it's 470. This surge comes from heavy state investment under Made in China 2025 including billions in R&D and acquisitions, like Germany's KUKA in 2016. Last year alone, nearly 300,000 new robots were installed. These aren't simple machines either. They handle predictive maintenance, real-time decisions, and collaborative work. In Shanghai, humanoids fold clothes and prep food using datasets like AggieBot World, while factory models such as DeepSeek R1 enable swarm intelligence over 5G. Some startups are already assembling electric trucks in just 15 minutes, and robots like Tiangong compute at 550 trillion operations per second. In 2024, the electronic sector added 83,000 units, with automotive right behind. But experts warn this growth also means job displacement, with Tsinghua University predicting semi-automated lines could become fully intelligent within five years. Anyway, that's where we're at right now. Thanks for sticking through this deep dive. Drop your thoughts below. Very good. Like a little bit scary. Hang on a lie. A lot of this stuff is very scary. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of scary the way some of these robots move. But on the flip side, if it is for the betterment of humans, China's on top of it. China's on top of it, man. Oh, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below, guys. I'll see you in the next one.